Now for the ability to align the body. Here we're going to make a distinction between the ability to align the body and the handstand. The concept of alignment refers to the gymnast's potential to position her body in such a way that all the parts make the straightest line possible while respecting the natural anatomical curvatures. So first the alignment, then the hold in alignment, and the hold in alignment in a handstand. The first thing to look at is whether or not the gymnast is flexible enough to align her body. The two major obstacles are really in the flexibility level of the shoulders and hips. The objective is to get to this position. The part connecting the pelvic girdle and the pectoral girdle is the chest, and this is the part of the body that will have the hardest time achieving alignment. What we're aiming for is a rounded upper back, contracted stomach, and hips on the floor. The seam of the leotard is nearly straight. Alignment is the straight line connecting the malleoli, knees, hips, shoulders and hands. It is not the line drawn by the back or front of the body, both of which respect the natural curvatures, particularly of the spine. This simple test can be done when a gymnast starts the sport because it lets you gauge her initial abilities to align the body. You'll see what the compensations are, and you can consequently suggest appropriate exercises to build flexibility and strength. In general, the shoulder joint will influence the dorsal kyphosis and thus the upper back and the angle of the arms and body. A lack of flexibility, particularly in the pectoralis major, will cause the shoulders to close and the ribs to shift forward. The hip joint will influence the position of the lower back and pelvis. So by working flat on the floor, you can eliminate the strength element and focus on flexibility. The gymnast will start flat on the stomach with the arms next to the body and then out to the sides. This will let you focus on the pelvis's influence on the chest. To be able to touch the hips to the floor, the gymnast needs to be able to at least tuck the pelvis under. If at this point you see that the gymnast can't touch the floor, it's because her flexor muscles are too short. So you'll need to have her work essentially on her flexibility in the psoas. The other focus is to start having the gymnast contract her body in order to round the back and pull in the abs, with the legs stretched, so that she can start to physically feel the ideal aligned position. Now with the arms over the ears. In general, it's here where you start seeing compensations. If you see that the upper back is less rounded, or that there's a closing angle in the underarms, it's because the pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, and teres major need to be more flexible. It also means that for now the gymnast must practice a lot of tripods because her shoulder flexibility is preventing her from aligning with the arms up. If there is no modification, you can raise the arm height so she's completely in handstand position and then check her body. Finally, you can do the same movement, but in contraction. This will tell you about the level of active flexibility. You can see here that when she raises the arms, she compensates by opening the body and legs. This indicates a lack of active flexibility, while in this shot she can raise the arms while keeping the chest in position. Keep in mind that if your gymnasts can't align their bodies in these positions, they can practice the handstand, but they'll have a lot of difficulty achieving perfect alignment, whether in static position or in all the dynamic movements with the body aligned. Muscle strengthening and passive and active flexibility of the hips and shoulders, rather than oral corrections or spotting alone, will enable them to achieve alignment. Now on the back. You'll focus on the position of the hips when they're open and on the size of the hollow in the lower back. You want the gymnast to contract the transversus in order to pull in the abs, and you want to slightly eliminate the lumbar lordosis. Having said that, in complete alignment, it's entirely normal to see a slight natural hollow. But if you see a hollow with the seam of the leotard curving upward, it indicates that the gymnast can't tuck her pelvis, 
and this is another indication of the shrinkage of the psoas. You can also look at the influence of the shoulders by having the gymnast place the arms over the ears. If there is insufficient flexibility, the ribcage will lift. Once you've examined the ability to align the body, you can look at the ability to hold the alignment. Like before, here you'll also do exercises on the back and stomach. Here we're essentially looking at the level of core muscle strength. This kind of exercise gives the gymnast more sensory information on what an aligned position feels like. It could be useful to have her put her head in the same position as in the handstand in order to see if this affects the body. You can have her put her hands in the position they would be in in the handstand or use a base to simulate the floor. All of this is done with the goal to check for compensations and then work on correcting them. When the gymnast is on her back, you can focus on the posterior muscle chain and when she's on her stomach, you can focus on the anterior muscle chain. After you do this, you can check the ability to do a handstand. We're aiming for the quality of alignment practiced in all the previous exercises and the active hold on the hands. So we'll check the concept of balance, but we'll especially check the shoulder strength that allows the gymnast to lengthen. The deltoids must be touching the ears. The other reference position to have is the dish position. This is a position we're going to see in all the movements into forward curl, particularly in the lifts of the backward giant, and if the gymnast can master it on the floor, she is showing that she grasps the position and is aware of the correct visual reference points on the feet. We'll start from the simple dish, with the gymnast supporting the back with the hands in order to help get into position and feel how her pelvis is high. Then do the same thing again but with the hands stretched behind the chest. Here, because she exerts herself to push back, the gymnast will easily be able to raise the feet and open the hips. And finally, with the arms over the ears. This requires flexibility in the nape of the neck, but this allows you to make the exercise more specific to the uneven bars. We'll also use this base to practice the back roll handstand, which is very useful for the backward giant.